This week we will perform an experiment on magnetic forces on the example of forces between current carrying wires. The current carrying wires produce magnetic field that will produce magnetic forces on other current carrying wires or on a permanent magnet. A long straight wire that carries a current I1 will produce magnetic field B whose magnitude at a distance r from the wire is given by b is equal k i1 divided by r, where k is a constant that depends on permeability of the space. The units for magnetic field are Tesla, after Serbian scientist Nikola Tesla. The direction of magnetic field is determined by the right-hand rule. If you grab the wire, so that your thumb is pointing in the direction of the electric current, your fingers will curl are in the direction of the magnetic field. If you place the second wire that carries current I2 close to the first wire, the magnetic field of the first wire will produce magnetic force on the second wire. This magnetic force will have then the magnitude of F is equal I2 L2 B sine theta where B is the field due to the first wire and the theta is the angle between the current of the second wire and magnetic field of the first wire. I2, L2 are the current and length of the second wire respectively. If we have two wires at a distance D, one from the another, the current in these two wires is in the same direction. Using the right-hand rule, we can get a direction of the magnetic field B1 and direction of the magnetic field B2. For this particular example here, they are in same direction, since the current is in same direction. So then the F2 is the force that wire 1 exerts on wire 2, and it's given by this equation, F2 is equal I2 L2 B1 sine of theta is equal to 1 since the current I2 is perpendicular to the magnetic field B1 and then plugging in the values for the magnetic field B1 we get this equation Similarly, the force that wire 2 exerts on the wire 1 is given by this equation. Now, if we reverse the current in the second wire, the equations will stay same. The only difference is in the first example here, we have currents in the same direction, so the force between these two wires will be attractive. And then for this example here, when we have the current of the wire 1 in one direction and current of the wire 2 in opposite direction, then the force between these two will be repulsive. It is important here to, to notice that the force, either attractive or repulsive, is going to be perpendicular to the current and to the magnetic field. So now if we look at the example where we have two wires that are perpendicular one to another, so the force that this wire that carries current I exerts on the wire that carries the current I2 is going to be given by this equation, F is equal I2 L2 times the magnetic field due to the wire carrying current I times the sine of the angle between B and I2. So here first we need to determine the direction of the magnetic field. If we use the right hand rule, your thumb will point into the direction of the current I, and then your fingers will curl into the direction of the magnetic field, which means the magnetic field will go into this direction, in this case counterclockwise. Angle that magnetic field takes with the current I2, the two of them are parallel one to another, so sine of the angle of zero degrees is equal to zero, then the force that this wire carrying current I 
exerts on the wire carrying current I2 is going to be equal to zero. Now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about steps of the experimental procedure. So on your table you're going to have this setup where you have a balance coil that sits on the balance and then you have a top coil. This balance coil is connected to the power supply and the current through this coil is going to be constant during the experiment. The top coil here is connected to a programmable power supply and to the ampermeter. So by changing the voltage through this coil we are going to change the current and then we will calculate the force between these two coils. So first when you come to the table everything should be off. The balance, the power supply, the programmable power supply and the ampermeter. So first you're going to turn power supply and read current I1 Then you're going to program programmable power supply as instructed in your manual. Your instructor will give you uh, Vmax and delta V. So you will start changing the potential from 0 volts to V maximum in increments of delta V. And as I said, these values will be given by your instructor. Then you will turn on ampere meter. Next, you will turn on the balance. Now you have to make sure that you stay clear of the table and then you will press uh, start on the programmable power supply and then you will record balance reading and uh, current from the ampere meter. Here you have to be careful. If the force between top coil and the balance coil is repulsive then the balance reading would be positive. If the force between these two coils top coil and the balance coil is attractive then the balance reading would be negative. Once you're done recording balance reading and the current values for three cycles and fill out your table in your laboratory manual you're going to turn off the balance then you will reverse banana cables on programmable power supply then again turn on the balance Make sure, again, you stay clear of the table, press start button on the programmable power supply, and then again record the balance reading and current readings for the three sets of data. Once you're done, you're going to turn off programmable power supply, power supply, balance, and ampere meter. Then you will follow the instructions in your laboratory manual. You will plot a force versus current through the top coil, which in your case would be a current I2, and then from the slope you're going to determine value for the K. Now I will show you a short demo on how to finish this experiment. Okay, so this is a setup for this week's experiment. We have power supply, balance, programmable power supply, multimeter, the balance coil is connected to a power supply and the top coil is connected to a programmable power supply and multimeter. Now turn the power supply on. The current through a balance coil is 0.6 amps. To program this power supply, press display and start. Hold it and turn the programmable power supply on. When 4L shows, turn the knob to set max and set the maximum voltage that is given by your instructor. For this example, I'll choose 3. Turn the knob back to stair and then choose the increments in voltage, delta V. These are also given by your instructor. For this example, I will choose 0.3. Hold display to see that the voltage starting voltage is 0. And then press display one more time and set the time to 15 seconds. Turn on the multimeter. Turn on the balance and press start on the programmable power supply. Make sure you stay clear of the table. Now you are ready to record the balance readings and the current readings into your laboratory manual. The programmable power supply should go from 0 to Vmax 3 full cycles. Once you are done recording the data, you are going to press off button on the balance 
then press stop on the programmable power supply and by reversing these wires here you're going to reverse the current in top coil and change the force between the top coil and the balance coil. Once you're ready you're going to turn the balance on. Also for this part of experiment you have to make sure to stay clear of the table since balance is extremely sensitive. Now press start on the power programmable power supply and again you're ready to record the balance reading and current readings into your laboratory manual. Same as before, you should make a three full cycles from zero volts to a Vmax. Notice here that balance and multimeter are giving a negative readings, so you have to make sure that you record these values as they are. Once you have three full cycles, turn the multimeter off, turn the programmable power supply off, turn the balance off and the power supply. Lastly, you have to return back the wires on the programmable power supply to its original setup. Now proceed with the rest of the instructions in your laboratory manual. This is all for this week. Thank you.